The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 958 Nothing to see here! With a little snuffling and a lot of groaning, the lay yup yup and yawned her way into wakefulness. Finally decided to join me, Shinespark asked, sitting in the captain's chair with one hoof keeping Valet from falling out, and the other guiding the dream toward a star-strewn horizon. You've been out for twelve hours. Must have had quite the night. Oh, bananas! Valet uncurled and stretched, demonstrating how the chair wasn't sized for two ponies, but managing to do it anyway. She groaned and rubbed at her stomach. Feels like I ate a barrel and then slept on it. Guess those fifteen dinners weren't as much of a dream as I hoped. Shinespark let herself glance down to the Cerosian in her lap. You going to be all right? Yeah, we'll be. Valet rolled out of the chair and onto her hooves, swishing her tail for balance. Be right back. Several minutes later, Valet returned, her mane properly mussed and looking significantly refreshed. Phew, she announced. So, I actually didn't break your toilet, but if I told anyone it was my goal, they'd have pretty good grounds to believe me. A romantic good morning to you too, Shinesburg replied, Valet's reflection grinning at her from the windshield. Don't know what you expected, Valet stepped back over to her side, standing next to the chair and resting her chin on one of the hoof rests. But hey, I kept my word. And it looks like we've got this place all to ourselves, if you want to talk or do anything. For as long as I can stay awake, Shinespark yawned. I was up early in the morning for meetings, and it's midnight. She looked down at Valet's head on the hoof rest, her friend looking back with lidded eyes. So... Valet shrugged. Girl, you're gonna have to be more forward if you want me to stop making this awkward. This is how I pass the time. And deal with awkwardness yourself, I'll bet. Shinesburg turned entirely to face her, folding her forelegs behind her head. So, are you going to say it, or do I have to? Valet smirked. If I say it, you know I'm gonna make it silly. Shinesburg leaned forward until they were nearly nose to nose. Or you could not, she whispered, and say what you're really thinking. Valet reddened. Not until you blush first. You lose, Shinesburg replied. Bananas, Valet said back and yawned. Well, uh, sometimes you're really hot. Shinesburg raised an eyebrow. Sometimes? Yeah, sometimes you just gonna flop around and exist without doing anything. Valet nodded sagely. But those times don't count. And what's hot is when you get back up again. It's kind of personal because I've had some times when I flopped around pretty badly too. So, um, yeah, I like you. And I'd rather make it awkward with jokes than be the one to straight up say it first. But look at me being the bigger mayor. Now fess up yourself, or I'll start talking again about all the stuff I did last night. Shinesburg reddened. Come on. Valet nudged her, grinning. Shinesburg got out of her chair and grabbed her in a tight hug. You're the most frustrating mare I know, and I don't know what I'd do without you in my life. Wow, you've been working out, Valet remarked. Come on now, tell me more. Shinespark hugged Valet over the shoulder so that her cheeks would be less visible as she talked. Y you you know. Valet Shadow snuck out of it, ducking into the floor and coming back up just in time to catch Shinespark and keep her from tipping over without the support. Before Shinespark could react, she leaned in again so they were nose to nose. I know a lot of stuff, cause I'm smart, got a big brain. You like it? Valet, Shinespark squeaked. I'm trying to be serious. Yeah, but I don't do serious. Valet waved a hoof over her shoulder. I've tried it before and stink pretty bad at it, and you're less happy when you do it too. Unless you want to be serious. Us tripping over each other and getting tongue-tied is totally fun too. 
Shinespark blushed furiously. Is there a way we can get to the next part without being so awkward? You ever dated before? Valet raised an eyebrow. What do you think? Oh, I'm not a qualified expert. Valet shrugged and grinned. But if you ask me, who cares about what's next? I completely trust you, and I know you trust me too. Why not have some fun trampling our dignity together and being completely shameless? I I'm not sure that suits me, Shinespark stammered, her mane growing untidy. Valet took a fearless step closer. Nah, come on, you're so uptight all the time. So, and princess, nothing but decorum for all your subjects and stuff? You've got the most to gain from letting loose. Go ahead, throw every inhibition you've got to the winds and do something you know I'll tease you about, but be totally fine with and keep between us forever. At least, think about what you'd do if you did. Show me the look on your face when you're thinking about it. Shinespark couldn't hide the look that Valet was looking for. V valet Yeah, Valet stuck out her tongue. Going once, going twice, I'm gonna beat you to it. Fine. Shinespark grabbed Valet in another hug, but this one was far from a means of hiding her face. Her hooves held Valet's sides instead of her shoulders, rubbing into her soft fur, and their noses and foreheads bumped for a second before Shinespark turned her head so her mouse could meet too. Valet didn't try to reply, using one hoof to stabilize them and another to brush Shinespark's mane and rubber ears, meeting the embrace exactly where it was at. I... Shinespark stepped forward during a pause for breath, pushing Valet back up against the wall. I'm going to wake up... Any minute now. Live your dreams, princess. Valet adjusted her grip for their more upright stance, pressing Shinespark's chest fluff against her own. Nobody sees. Nobody cares. If they do, we don't care. And if we do, I bet you I can kick face while still holding you like this. Just a little one hoof go away punch. Biff, kapow. Knock him sillier than we are. She grinned and touched Shinespark's nose again, leaning in for another round. The unmistakable sound of clicking talons sounded outside the bridge door. Giorno Guillaume, stay out of this room! Shinespark instantly hollered. Valet and I are having a moment! A very reasonable proposition, Giorno called back for the door. I merely thought to relieve you of your shift. I'll be stargazing if you change your minds. The sound of talons walked away. Shinespark turned redder, and Valet stared intently into her eyes, arching an eyebrow of her own. Having a moment, huh? Their noses were still touching. Guess someone's not as shy about announcing it to the world as they pretend. It's true, though. Shinespark reddened further, and her ears went back. An adult moment. Nah, Valet reached up and tried to push Shinespark's ears back up over hooves, which wasn't very successful. This is definitely more of a teenage moment. Valet? Valet shrugged. So what, we want to stay locked up in here? Because technically, no one is piloting the ship, and Birdo just offered to do it for us. Unless you think it would be hot to try piloting while we're snogging? Shinespark's eyes glazed over, imagining it. Yep, Valet went on, rubbing Shinespark's back. Imagine you're sitting there, all stoic and cool, and pulling double duty watching for sky icebergs or whatever at the same time as holding me close, and it's weird and heroic because you're sacrificing a little attention you could be paying to me for the sky instead, which makes you crazy hot, cause you're like keeping us safe and- Wait, sky icebergs? Shinespark blinked. We're over an ocean, aren't we? Billy shrugged. What else are we gonna hit? Some random mountain? I don't know what piloting involves, it's all flying in a straight line to me. It sure sounds hot though. We're handing off to Gerardo. Shinespark shook her head, slipping free from the embrace and resting on all four hooves. And then sitting on the deck or something. Valet fixed her hat and stretched her wings. That's groovy to me.
After a lot of furtive glances from Valet, Shinespark wasn't nearly shameless enough to repay. The captain's shift had been handed off, and Gerardo Guillaume now sat alone on the bridge, separated by a brand new door from anything that could happen on the deck. They weren't high in the sky, the ship skimming along at a low enough altitude individual waves were visible below, but even a clear view of the stars didn't stop the night from growing chilly. Valet slipped Shinespark her hat for warmth, the duo sitting side by side at the starboard railing, Shinespark wrapped in Valet's wing. You make more of a difference than the hat does, Shinespark murmured. Yeah, it's a cute gesture. Valet leaned her cheek against Shinespark's shoulder, and Shinespark leaned hers against the top of Valet's head. So, um, I guess we like each other. I guess we do. Do you care a whole lot about the difference between like and love? How do you mean? Valet shrugged. I don't know, like bananas. You know how much I care about you. At least, I hope you do. I beat up Herman himself because your cute butt was in trouble, and that was before we went through a bunch of stuff together. At the same time, caring too much about doing relationships the right way has, uh, made me not very happy in the past. So, like, I know I teased you into making a move back there, but for real, I kinda don't want to get too caught up in the semantics of what this relationship is. You get me? Because that leads to thinking about what it's supposed to be. And I know you're supposed to be all, Oh, bananas, I love you and everything, which, I don't know, makes me a little wigged out. Because I don't want to have the kind of relationship where I've got to walk on pins and needles to keep from messing something up. I'm a messy girl. Making messes is my thing. You know? I don't know what I'm doing, Shinespark replied. If there were guidelines on how this was supposed to go, I could use them. I'd also accidentally break them a lot. Well, what do you want from me? Valet shifted against Shinesbuck's shoulder. What do you like? I want to feel like when I get a little stiff in the wings at my best friend, you're in on it too. I trust you with pretty much anything, and I want more opportunities to, like, do stuff with that trust. Stuff that's different from needing to save each other every once in a while from some evil bad guy. Like, touching each other's fluff. How about you? Shy Spark fought for a moment. I suppose that's accurate, she eventually said. I want to feel less reserved about enjoying your company. And I'd like it if we were comfortable enough with each other that it didn't have to be quite so awkward when we talk about this. Yeah, I think we're past that, Vili winked. Maybe. No promises. I get that, though. Like, bananas. You've never been in a relationship. I've never been in a real one. I don't want to have to know where we're going. I just want you to know that I think you're real swell. And if I'm weird and don't want to be all, Hey, I love you because I've got a complex about that and don't want to make myself feel like this is a real relationship that I've got to do right. Uh, she waggled the tips of her wings in emphasis. Well, I want to know that you get it and know how I feel anyway. Good, Shinesbuck sighed. If there are any formalities or decorum involved with a real relationship, I can't live with them either. You're probably already aware, but once we get back to Ironridge, us being very public about our affection for each other could be... interesting. Oh boy, Lily whistled. Yeah, that would be fun. Honestly, I kind of want to do it anyway, just to collectively blow the city's minds, but yeah, it would probably help them take us more seriously if we were more serious around them. Which only matters if we want something from them, so hey, it's our call. But now that there's no Garshiva heresy to execute us if we mess up, if they want to say us making out is naughty, that just makes doing it behind closed doors a lot more fun. <laughs> Shinespark chuckled. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it does. My point still stands, though. If you ever want something from me out of this, just ask, because I don't have a rule book to read that says what to do for you and when. I should write one of those, Valet remarked. Dating advice by Valet. Bet it would be a bestseller. Complete nonsense, too. 
Imagine if I wrote that you were expected to do a flamingo dance every time your lover steps on a manhole and not tell them why. The world would be in complete chaos if even a tenth of ponies took it seriously. I like your imagination, you know, Shinebuck added. You're very... colorful. And you're easy to tease, Valet snuggled her shoulder. But if you're saying you want to listen to me spout off whatever comes to mind, hey, I got all night. End of chapter 958